Matthew chapter 28, we're going to read verses 16 through 20. This passage is known as the Great Commission. I think it's worth noting that before Jesus gives the Great Commission, He's already released the Great Commandment. Before He releases the Great Commission, He's already released the Great Commandment. What is the Great Commandment? It's to love Jesus with all that you've got. Mm. To ask the Holy Spirit to fill your love tank continually so that it's out of a heart of love that we can fulfill the Great Commission. He had three and a half years with his disciples. I believe he knew the future. He knew that they would become martyrs, all of them except for John. And so if you look at sports or you look at coaching, if you think to yourself, okay, I've got three and a half years to get these guys ready to get to the place where they'll be martyrs of mine, what's the game plan? What would you come up with that would ready people for martyrdom? What was it about a man who called 12 disciples to himself originally and they literally left everything and followed him? I wish you and I had that kind of influence on people. We could just walk up to people and, hey, follow me, and they just sell everything and just let's go. What was it about him? What was he carrying? What did he possess? What, what did he inject in them, in their minds and their hearts in three and a half years that got them ready to be crucified upside down, to be stoned to death. I mean, what a sacrifice that these apostles made for Christ. But what fueled the ultimate commitment, the obedience? I mean, how many of you want to want to get there? I, I want to get to the place where if you put a gun to my head and said, deny Christ or you'll die. I mean, it's not even a thought. I'm ready. What, what would it take to impact? you to drive out all the fear, all the questions that would go through your mind. I mean, what, what would it be? And really the simple answer is he wounded them with what I call a divine wounding. And if I could articulate that divine wounding, I would call it love sickness. Come on. Mm. He wounded them like he shot an arrow out of heaven and pierced their hearts. He developed a relationship and a level of intimacy with them, a realm of servanthood where these apostles would go out as we're about to read. They would go out under an apostolic witness with true boldness and authority, but an apostolic witness is born out of an apostolic encounter. See, I could just get up here and go off about where, where is the witness? Where is the evangelism? Why don't you share your faith at work? I, I, I could harp on that a lot. Or I can get to the root rather than the fruit. See, a lot of times we address the fruits of disobedience rather than getting at the root in our hearts of we're lacking an apostolic encounter. What do I mean by that? We're lacking an encounter where Jesus begins to reveal himself in such a way that he wounds us. He flips our life upside down and we were going one way and now we're going the other. Mm. I mean, how often do you really meet these people? Gifted, called. I was called to be a banker. I could have gone to college at literally any place, but then I had an encounter. And the encounter wasn't, and then I went to banking school. The encounter was, I had plans and I left them all at the foot of the cross. And I'm not even recognizable anymore. 
But you're used to people adding their encounters to wherever they're going. Mm. But we hear so very few men and women that have been so encountered and literally rocked by the power of God that it has changed everything about them. Amen. I'm not settling for anything less than this. I'm not settling for a homosexual being delivered and just sitting in the back of a church till they die and go to heaven. I'm going to settle for a homosexual delivered on the front lines of a rally in Washington, D.C., ready to wash the feet of the impurity that's trying to over... I'm not going to settle for anything less than divine encounters. This is not get saved and rot in church on the back pew. This is not get saved and become programmed like a robot. This is not get saved in the fires of revival and get married and have kids and the fire dies. Hello. Lord, we need a divine encounter. We need whatever it is that you injected into those disciples that allowed them to walk in a true apostolic witness. So it's important to understand that. If you're finding yourself not obeying like you think you should, if you find yourself not being able to commit like you know you should, get away from the fruits of the disobedience and work on the root of the disobedience. What is it in my heart that has to be addressed and encountered by the Lord? Because if there's not a true encounter and it's just born from willpower, well, you can hike yourself up and fast and pray and serve at church, but eventually you'll burn out. Eventually that flame is going to die. So I'm talking about an apostolic witness as we're going to look at today. Men and women that were possessed by God, willing to lay down their lives at a price. Why? They had been encountered. And I want to tell you, this is why I burn for revival. I burn for altars because I literally want to see people get struck by lightning again. We have settled for, if you're called to ministry, just raise your hand. If you're called to ministry, just go to seminary, Bible college, you know, here's your degree. But were you called? In other words, like, were you zapped? Like, were you blown up? Were, 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 was there a divine collision? Was your life flipped upside down so that when the troubles of life and the pleasures and the desires for other things come, you just don't walk that way because you've been arrested? You've been convicted. You've been, I'm telling you, God is raising up a generation of apostolic and prophetic messengers who will be unmovable in their day of trial. They will not weather. They will not waver. They are not fair weather fans. Trial, tribulation, whatever's going to come to America, bring it on, baby. I've been bought with a price. Where else shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. See, you're either sold out or you're selling out. Is your life anchored and rooted on the rock solid foundation of Jesus Christ? Is God peace? Is God good? Period, period, period. Is God good? Because death, disease, divorce, disaster was never meant to challenge whether God is good. He's good. No good thing will he withhold from those who seek his face. Lord, I'm all in. Lord, I'm all in, and if I'm not all in, I'm passionately pursuing that kind of encounter where when I'm in a store and someone says flippantly, Jesus Christ, 
Brother Dell, rather than getting resolved, oh my God, they took his name in vain. What if something rises up on the inside of you, like I'm connected, I'm in love? What about Jesus Christ? Do you know him? I was on a plane six years ago, and I ride planes all the time, and things flopping all around, and people are screaming, and I'm just literally saying, hallelujah, Lord. I saved the lady, the Lord saved the lady in midair, all because I was unmoved. She could not believe that I was not losing my mind with 60 other passengers who thought the plane was going to go down. She's like, where do you get this? I said, this is called Christianity. This is not going to church and just trying my best to serve God. This is an encounter that has wounded me so deeply. I honestly can't wait till either I die or he comes again. Come on. I want you to jump off the stage with me this morning. I want you to put, put your toe, I, I want to help push you a little farther, draw you a little farther in your faith and, and your, I, I get excited to preach because I'm just filled with, there's no telling what God wants to do today. There's no telling what kind of encounter awaits you this week at work. But again, how do we get to that place of witnessing and sharing our faith, not out of religious obligation, but we're in love with a man. It's easy to share about my wife to people and brag on her why I'm in love. But have we encountered and experienced the Lord Jesus Christ in such a way that when we're confronted with deception, when people are taking the name of the Lord in vain, when a woman is saying, it's my life, it's my baby, I'm going to kill her if I want to. Is there anyone in love with Jesus enough to declare, you know what, you, that's your life, but that's not your life. And I'm all about freedom, but I'm not about freedom that chooses to take the life of another. That's murder. But where, where, how, how could you say that? I'm in love with a man who is the way, who is the truth, who is the life. Are you, are you tracking with me? Yes. It's like somebody starts bad-mouthing your wife, man. And it's, and it's more than just, oh, you better not be talking about my wife, bro. But there's a love, there's an intimacy. It's almost like there's an authority that you step up under. Hey, you better not be talking about my wife like that. Where's the fuel? Where's the passion coming from? Intimacy. Yeah. But I just wonder when our Christian values continue to be challenged in this nation, I wonder if the reason why no one is saying anything is because they haven't had an encounter. Come on. One more time. I wonder why no one is saying anything. I wonder why when abortion and homosexuality and sex, I wonder when all this stuff comes up, we just, well, let's pray they come to church this week. See, the, the, this mentality that we now have in the church where we just hope our best shot is somehow they walk through the door. We're here on Easter Sunday. It's the... Last time I've preached here, 500 people here, I give a salvation call. No one in this building raised their hand. So we had 500 people here and not one person in this building did not know the Lord. I guess you could say, praise God. I wanted to jump off a building all week. How sad. I made a vow to the Lord. I said, if I'm ever in here again on an Easter Sunday and there's not the lost, the sick, the bound, where has even inviting your neighbors and friends to church gone? 
where, where has being a witness, where, where has just sharing your faith and it really doesn't even have anything to do with church. You just invested the time in sharing the gospel with just someone. Because it's like parents in this day and age, right? Like, if you don't teach your kids, Fortnite will. Right. I'm too busy at work. That's fine. But your kids are going to grow up totally godless. Totally, well, we, we raised them in church. Yeah, but the dominating voice in their life was not yours. It was entertainment. Mm. The church has gotten to the place where we've gotten, and I, I don't need to mention all the statistics, I've, I've referred to them so much, but we've gotten where we've gotten because we continue to want to separate church from politics. I love to use the example right here in Lakeland. So was it last year, the year before, the guy running for mayor is a flamboyant homosexual? completely anti-Christ agenda. And we find out that one of the other brothers is a born-again believer, of a family man. So here's our choice. We could just have our little revival at Heart of the Father. And, oh, praise the Lord. His mercy, His love. And or we can get out and vote. This is what's happening in America. We just have our little revival, our little praise the Lord. And meanwhile, the world, the government, the education system is being overrun by the devil. Yes. I'll, be, I'll be straight up honest with you. I've stopped asking God to raise up like preachers in the church. I pray zero prayers right now about that. My number one prayer right now is, Lord, raise up spirit-filled teachers in the education system. Lord, raise up godly government officials. Hey, did you hear what happened in Australia? Let me read the news. I feel like that's half the problem. Dude, they're literally on the front page of the paper in Australia. It says, miracle. Miracle. And the prime minister this morning went to a spirit-filled church and they dumped anointing oil on his head and prophesied and decreed a godly reign in the nation of Australia. But you know, he got him elected, not worldly people, the church. We have a mandate. We have a calling to infiltrate. Yes. Come on. This whole let the fight come to us has worked. And the fight has come to the American church and we are getting overrun. Yes. That's why Vance Havner, he says, in revival, the church dormant becomes the church militant. Yes. See, the Lord is looking to raise up an army in the earth. Men and women, moms and dads, grandparents who are lovers of the truth. They have conviction. They're not afraid to speak up and out. Well, brother, that sounds so harsh. I'm telling you, let's just go read our Bibles then. Because this Christianity where we get saved and just sit back until Jesus returns is non-existent. One more time. This Christianity where we just get saved and sit back until Jesus returns is not biblical. How do you know that? Matthew 28 verse 16. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, or the proper translation would say, As you go, as you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
I could do a six week series just breaking down those three verses. But let me just sum it up to you. Jesus wounds the disciples with a divine encounter called love sickness. He gets to the core. He's redeemed Peter. He's forgiving. And then he says, all right, now that you're full, I'm sending you out. I'm giving you the authority that I, I walked in and I want you to make disciples. I want you to share your faith. I not only want you to share your faith, I want you to live it. I don't want you to be a hypocrite. I don't want you to attend church on Sundays and act like a different way during the week. I want you disciples make disciples. Amen. Who would say amen to this? Amen. Okay. Who are you discipling? Who are you meeting with every week and not only teaching them about Christ, but manifesting it to them? Well, brother, I, I do it with my kids. Well, brother, I'm telling you there's more. But much of the foundation in the church is missing by simply asking these kinds of questions. Who are you discipling? Who are you investing in? I'm telling you, church staff hardly does this anymore. You even ask pastors and leaders, who are you meeting with weekly, investing in, pouring your life out into? They just look at, well, I'm in the ministry. I preach. No, are you making disciples? We teach people what we know. We reproduce who we are. Who are you reproducing? Not who are you? Who are you teach? Who are you teaching to look and act? Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm telling you, in our, our Pentecostal period, it's like, Lord, we need revival. We need extended meetings. We need more people falling down. What I see as I travel literally all over this nation is a revival is coming to the Pentecostal charismatic movement called discipleship. Again, hear me. If something is rising up inside of you against this message, don't make it about me. Make it about him. This is Christianity 101. Come encounter me. Let me pour your love. Lord, thank you for the worship today, the love of God. And now I'm here to be trained, equipped, and sent. Like your, your main miss, mission here this morning was to glorify and worship the Lord, but then to be prepared and sent out to wage war on the devil this week. Amen. All right. I encourage you. You're not a bunch of pew fodder for preachers. See so many people, they sit in the church, and it's like, oh, wow. There, there can be people that are godly besides the preacher. Like someone could share their faith more than the man or woman of God. I'm telling you, we are where we're at in the world because an army of saints has not been mobilized to infiltrate every sphere of society, preach the gospel and make disciples. You don't need your permission from your pastor or church to do that. Jesus Christ has already commissioned you. You don't need a sign up at church. This is, it's bothered me over the years, I'll be honest. Sign up for evangelism. Sign up for a prayer meeting. Saints, prayer and evangelism, we're talking inhale, exhale. It's, it's like if you're spiritual or, oh, that church, oh, that church is really deep. I said, great, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, they pray and they go out and win the loss. I about fell over. I'm like, my gosh. If you're deep, 
Because you go to prayer meetings and you regularly share your faith. I mean, I don't know if it's a matter of you're deep. It's just a matter of a whole lot of people are clearly more shallow than they think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I love you. <laughs> he loves you. It's out of this divine encounter with the love of God where I'm telling you, I can't explain the kind of encounters I've had with him where he's filled me with his joy, his love. It's like the good news just gets too good to not share with someone. Like, I don't know how people don't do it. Like, how can God be so mighty, so powerful, so awesome? It's like, you know, car salesmen. Now I'm going to get in trouble because usually we have car salesmen. But I mean, you know, they're selling you a lemon and making you feel like you're buying a brand new car, right? Listen, I want to make somebody feel like they are about to accept the greatest gift on earth. And we're not selling them a lemon. We're selling them Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. I'm not offering someone some puny God who just needs more followers because he's lonely up there. I'm talking there. There's authority. There's boldness. There's courage. We were in Africa several years ago, and I just had this anointing that came upon me. And I literally, I would run up on people's porches in Africa, and I would literally scream out, Have you seen him? <laughs> I'm like a madman acting like we've lost someone. Have you seen him? Oh, my love. And they're just like, who in the world? I said, Jesus Christ. Like, it's okay to act crazy. Paul said, if I'm in my right mind, it's for you. If I'm out of my mind, it's for Christ. Now, the teachers are going to get me because I might have exaggerated that. But listen, be crazy for Jesus. No, be passionate. Be full of zeal. It's okay if you offend people. They're going to hate you. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep seeking. And it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with being in love with this man named Jesus. Yes. Do you know him? Yes. <laughs> do we know him to such a degree that literally, Tim, Connor, man, I just want to bless you. For going out to that abortion clinic faithfully every week. I saw you this week, man. I started crying in my car. Faithful with that sign saying, Lord. And I don't know if you know, but I felt like the pleasure of God over you. Tim has encountered me in such a way that it's literally no big deal. To stand under the hot sun and fight for babies being murdered right here in this county. Lord, I just want to get free from the... Because this is what we feel, right? It's like the, the cat scratching, like, oh, another prayer meeting. Oh, another fast. Oh, an, uh. Lord, I just want to set all the calendar scheduled stuff at the church on the side and just say, Lord, fill me up with your love. Get down on the inside of me in such a way that you change me. And when you pour out upon my life, I begin to do way more in your strength than I ever could do in mine. Dude, he's so good. But he pours his love and then he says, go. As you go, make disciples. Now, I have a feeling I'm running out of time. I never really wear watches and there's no clock in here. So turn to Acts 17 real quick. Shows you how much I care about the time. 
All right, Acts 17. Here's, here's Paul. Now again, Paul, he didn't necessarily walk with the Lord, but Jesus Christ did show up to him. He's had this kind of apostolic encounter, this face-to-face. -face. Listen, I just want to encourage you, whether you accepted Christ yesterday, you don't know the Lord, there's always a deeper experience of God available to us. Mm. There's always a deeper measure of journeying in God that He's provided for us in Jesus. And I just want to encourage you to take that leap today. But here they're, they're going out, Acts chapter 17, here they show up to this city, Thessalonica. Now when they had traveled to Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And according to Paul's custom, he handed out flyers and hoped they would come to his meeting. They had a mandate to infiltrate, to go, to insert themselves into cities and not just build a church and say, oh God, I just pray that people passing by Barto 98, you know, you just speak to them and they just come waltzing in here. What if somebody got so possessed they're running out in the highway, waving their hands, stopping cars, saying, have you seen him? Probably get arrested with <laughs> He went to them. And for three Sabbaths, he re- I love it. This was Paul's custom. His game plan was, when I arrive in the city, Brandon will get this, I'm doing a full court press. When I show up, I'm, I'm automatically, I'm doing a full court press, and I'm going to be right up in there, reasoning with them, showing them their deception. I'm going to go right up to the abortion clinic, I'm going to find wherever there's evil, and we're going to do a full court press there. Why? Again, not because my church said it's a good idea. Not um, because, oh, the Bible says I should go make disciples. I've encountered the love of God in such a way that it compels me to go. I'm more concerned with those babies than someone cussing me out and spitting on me. He explained and gave evidence that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, saying, This Jesus who I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks and a number of the leading women. Can we just give praise to God that they go in this city and there's actually some converts? Because I spent six months in India getting spit on by Muslims and Hindus. It was hell on earth and we never saw a conversion. So when I read a story like this, I'm like, thank God Paul had such, I don't know what I was doing, but thank God for the anointing that they had that's even some went, right? How often are we stopped from sharing because we like psych ourselves out? They won't believe anyways. Better not invite them to the heart of the Father. They're crazy over there. Oh, so you're God now? Oh, you're God now. You have become God. Now you get to determine whether God will encounter someone or, or not. Come on, I know you've got friends. You've got family that you've already put into the category of going to hell. They're lost. They're hopeless. They'll never turn. That is a lie from the pit of hell. I did this youth rally <laughs> out in Alabama four years ago. You know, Alabama, praise God for that woman who just passed that law. Those demons are going nuts. Principalities and powers raging. I'm just thrilled. I did a youth rally in Alabama four years ago. We got those kids, I don't know what the term is now, lit. 
I mean, they were going nuts. I'm yelling and screaming, oh, you say roll tide and you, you're in idolatry and I'm just preaching to paint off the walls, tell them they need to repent. And if you get excited about football, you should be like 10 times. I'm telling you, it was like the, you know, in the book of Acts, it says the place that they prayed was shaken. I mean, it was literally, we were shaking the rafters and those kids were out of their mind. You know, when teenagers sweat, I mean, it stinks so bad. I mean, it's literally just a, and we're going crazy and there was an older man on the front row who came up afterward just started rebuking me. Bam. I, what I found is when the Holy Spirit's presence and power gets stirred up, a religious devil is always waiting to shut it down. This guy starts coming after me about, oh, this is fake. This is emotionalism. You're just stirring up all this different stuff. And the Spirit of God, and this is why I want to encourage you, please hear me. When you begin to encounter the love of God, the passion of his heart, you will begin to say things that come out of your mouth before you can stop them. <laughs> Did you just, you, it will erupt. It will explode. There's something in your DNA. You can't silence me. I erupted on this guy and I just said, sir, all this crying out, all this screaming, we're lifting up our voices for the 60 million babies in this nation that have been murdered and never had a voice. Their mom never heard them cry. Their, their grandparents never. We are lifting up our voice for them. And I just want to encourage you when you're in, it's more than about you. Saints, you don't feel like it. You could have been worshiping this morning because your cousin's going to call you on Tuesday with a problem and you need to press in today and get in the face of God and get under the anointing of the Holy Spirit so when they call you on Tuesday, bam, that yoke is broken in the name of Jesus because I don't I just love running after God, chasing him down because I'm just like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to come up this week, but Lord, I'm pressing into you and I just can't wait to see what's going to happen. Paul just walks up into Thessalonica, preaches the gospel. It goes right to him. They had some converts, but hear me, we're, we're landing the plane, but here's the truth. But the Jews becoming jealous, verse 5, and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace, formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. And coming upon the house of Jason, they were seeking to bring them out to the people. And when they did find them, they began dragging Jason and some brethren before the city authorities, saying, These are the men that have turned the world upside down this is how you spell troublemaker brother I just don't want to offend anyone you need an encounter so you're more afraid of offending God than offending your friend no you didn't hear me you need an encounter so that's what's way before you is not losing your co-worker. It's losing intimacy with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Dude, just think about it. They're flying banners all over Lakeland in planes. Heart of the Father. That's that church that has flipped Lakeland upside down. They stopped having church on Sunday and went to the abortion clinic and surrounded that place and lifted up a shout of praise to the Lord and shut that sucker down. Yeah. Oh, but what are the possibilities? What are we doing? You know, I'm glad to be in a church where as far as I know, there's not too much religion around here. I don't care what we do. Three songs and offering a message? That's not in the Bible. 
What if we just came every Sunday and prayed earlier like we did? We just got fired up. We got stirred up in our spirit. We went out of here underneath an apostolic witness and had a harvest of souls. There were so many new converts that came next Sunday. We thought it best to make it not about us. And we just broke up into small groups and let you disciple the new converts. That's called church. What are people saying about you? There's Matt. He loves the Lord. Praise God. There's Jeff. He's Maranatha student. Matt, that's nice. I mean, what, what, what's the what's the rhetoric? What's what's the narrative? Because when they preached the gospel, it was either revival or riot. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't take all that. I mean, I'm talking to Enrico before service. He's telling me he's getting ready to get kicked out of the Okeechobee prison. You know why? He can't preach Jesus is the only way anymore. They tell him, just, just come and preach Jesus, but don't tell them he's the only way. I, I love Enrico. He said, why even go? I said, bro, you should just pray for one more time and go ballistic in <laughs> Just sneak in one last time and preach your guts out. I mean, die of a heart. I want to get so wound up one time, I just keel over and die. Just die. <laughs> he went out with a bang. <laughs> but I, I want to encourage you today. I want to stir you. It, this is normal. This is okay. This is Christian. Shut down the voices in your life that tell you to settle down. Because that voice that's telling you to settle down cares more about the opinions of people than God. Paul said, if I'm here to please you, why should I preach the gospel? Lord, I just want to do what God says when he tells me to say it. And if you listen, and again, I'll just I'll qualify it. I'm not talking about intentionally offending people for offense sake. I'm talking about preaching the gospel, the love of Christ, the only way. And if they don't like it, that's okay. We're going to love them to the cross. I got plan B, baby. You don't like my preaching? I'll just love you to the cross. If you don't love, if I can't love you to the cross, I'll pray that someone crosses your path that you like more and can just accept Jesus. The days are coming to the church where we are going to be bold as lions. Where people are going to walk in here and say, wow, they actually believe in God. Because you know what I see as I travel? People can see through the facade now. People are tired of being patronized. They, they're like, you don't believe that. I saw you at the bar last night. You don't believe that. I saw, we watched porn last week. You don't, you don't, but not in here. No, the same way I am in here is the same way I'm out there. No one is safe from an encounter with God. Lord, come and turn us upside down today. Come and shake. One last one. Acts 19, real quick. Acts 19. One more time where they go to them. I, I just, I, I believe there's an apostolic witness. And what I mean is the Spirit of God is coming to, to breathe on the coals. But if you've got a little fire today, I'm telling you, God's going to stoke the fire. If you've got no fire, I'm telling you, God's going to send the fire. Bring the wormwood, the wet wood, the dry wood. Bring, and if you're ready, to, I believe God is going to blow, not only here, but He's, I call it the end time church. 
God is going to blow in power and begin to give a strong witness, a confirmation, a boldness and power upon the church where we are going to go from the back pew to the front lines in our cities. I believe there's marches coming. Saints, I'm telling you, in 2020, when this election card comes, and it is literally Trump who's going to push conservative agendas, and you're going to have, there is going to be riots. Yes. There is going to be a clash over this issue of life. If you're not ready, sorry, get ready. Yes. We're in the last days now. I'm not. You talk to me like people like you're preaching fear. I'm like, honestly, I'm not. I'm like excited out of my mind. I, I kind of get jacked about when you're talking about a war against good and evil, light and darkness. Or are you some sicko? No, I know who wins in the end. of his kingdom in the earth. Oh God, come to my work. That's why you're there. Oh God, save my family. This reunion, they're all getting slammed out the bar. That's why you're there. Stop asking God for help when he sent you there to be the help. Amen. Acts 19, real quick. They're causing more trouble. I just love to read this stuff. I get caught up in this week. Acts 19.11, God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And seven sons of one Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. The evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? Saints, I'm not talking about false fire. I'm not talking about manufactured fire. I'm not talking about fake it till you make it. These seven sons of Sceva, they thought they were going to borrow intimacy and take that fuel out and be able to contend against the darkness. It's really not that funny, but you're around Christians all the time who someone's demon possessed and they're just saying, in the name of Jesus, come out. And obviously they're not coming out. And they're like wondering, why aren't they? I got the power of the name of Jesus. Are you a son of Sceva? What am I saying? Intimacy and connection with the Lord is what gives you dominion over devils. That's right. There's power in the name of Jesus, but you have to learn how to live in that name. Yes. When I'm talking about the church becoming mobilized, an apostolic witness coming upon the church, here's where he needs to find you in the place of prayer. Here's where he needs to find you, in the place of communion with the Holy Spirit. That's who God is going to breathe on. But these guys, they try to find a way around it. And God wants to address that today. What we're talking, the church is going to step into, it's going to, it's going to cost you something. Obviously, we know that, right? Making a disciple, if you're not making one right now, is going to cost you some time doing something. It's going to inconvenience you. Praise God, it's not going to be about you anymore. You're going to have to make a sacrifice. But when this witness comes upon the church, it's going to be a real deal anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, and you shall receive power from the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses till the end of the earth. Some of you are looking for the power and it's found in the place of prayer. Some of you are looking for the deliverance and the freedom and it's 
it's going to cause you to spend a few extra moments at the altar today saying, God, I need your anointing. I need your power. I need your presence. I want you to wreck me and mess me up so much today that I need to call an Uber to get home. If that just sounded extreme to you, you need revival. You need the fire of the Holy Spirit to flip you upside down and cause a hunger to burn inside of you that overrides how hungry you are for pizza right now. I want God to touch me. Lord, I want such a yearning and aching and longing that I don't even need food anymore. Maybe I came for one today. Maybe I came for ten. But I'm telling you, there's some people in this room God's going to use to turn the world upside down. You're going to preach another king. His name ain't Trump. You're going to preach King Jesus. You're not going to settle for anything less than the best. You're going to stop letting the devil kick the crap out of you. Excuse my language. You're not going to settle for sickness, a miserable marriage, life as usual. Forget that. We were born for so much more than what we're settling for. And I'm telling you, the fires of revival and apostolic witness, boldness and courage, you're going to hear about it. There's going to be troublemakers that God is going to raise up like tips of the spear. They're going to preach the gospel and literally revival or riot is going to come. We find here as we finish this after the sons of Sceva, after these kind of fake fraudulent, I want you to hear me be as real and raw with God today as you can. You don't have to pull yourself up and, oh man, he's fired up, I better get fired up. Just come to God today where you're at. Do the Samuel thing. Lord, here I am. Here I am right now. Please just take me where I'm at. But Lord, I'm recognizing right now I need the witness. I need the fire. I need to go. Lord, will you just breathe on me today? But then as the story finishes, they end up causing another riot. <laughs> the magicians, the people in the town, they start converting and all of a sudden people start burning their magic books. They have a bonfire in the middle of the city that says, come and bring your porn. Come and bring your televisions. Come and bring your, your shopping sprees. Come, come and bring your casual harlotry. I want you to come and just bring anything in your life that's hindering deeper intimacy with God. I just, I just let's have a bonfire. And because the bonfire, it literally, listen folks, there was such a fire that burned in the book of Acts that the bonfire shut down their economy. What if the church chose life and shut down the abortion industry? Because if you don't know it, it's all about money. They were geniuses. They stupid geniuses. They invented abortion. They taught sex education. Go ahead and do it and then have an abortion. It's like a sick cycle. Demonic. The pornography industry makes more money than NBA and MLB. All the sports combined. What if we caught fire to such a degree that literally we just started having a... I, I saw it in a dream last night. I'm telling you, some of you, it's time to have a bonfire at your house. Do it in the front yard. Start burning up your stuff so that the neighbors come out and say, what in the world are you doing? Are you doing? And you know what you need to tell them? You know, oh, well, uh, you know, we're just having a fire tonight. You say, I went to church and got delivered of idolatry. That I, I cut you, you, you think that flame is hot right there? I've got a hotter flame. His name is Jesus and he's living on the inside of me. Oh, you think I'm a bold preacher? Let's read the book of Acts. And well, oh, you think part of the Father is deep? Let's look at the book of Acts, church, and see who's deep. 
you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's not a one-time thing. I believe it's a daily thing. You will, Lord, I just, I need a breakthrough. Lord, I need deliverance. God, I need to get to that next stage in you. I need the power. If that's you, I just want you to come down to the altar right now. You can I just have Mason up here? I believe that there are folks in here right now that there is a fire. There's something in you. You've hit a wall. There's different kinds of walls that we face as believers. For some of us, like I said, just be honest. God, this is where I'm at. If you're sitting, I just want you to begin to pray. And I like these atmospheres because my touch won't do only His will. Do not settle this morning for anything less than God touching you. Mason is going to sing this song. And as we press in today, I just want to invite you to say, God, release an apostolic witness in my life. What are we talking about? Boldness, courage, a love for the truth. God, break the fear of man off of my life. God, if I'm more afraid of offending people than you, God, break that thing off of me right now. Yeah. 